upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be disunited. May Allah grant us unity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to hold fast on this rope. The rope here referring to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Baby, you can call me a superman. Chuchu tilta takani takupa Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Longo. And we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we wanna thank everybody out there who've been subscribing to our channel. You're the realest MVP man. And not forgetting the people who've been giving us reaction, you're also also the realest MVP man. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Jesse Keegan and my lovely girlfriend goes with that by the name Fanny Lungu and we are, you know, um, Fanny and Jesse as, as, as you heard earlier and we are a couple, I mean, we are a couple who wants to see differences, who we want to spread out the, the, the good energy out there, who wants to learn, who wants to understand the people that we are talking to who wants to understand other religion right now we are actually trying to understand what Islam is you get it I was a Christian and it reached a point whereby I felt like I don't want to be in any religion or any type of religion so right about now I'm at a point whereby I'm trying to find out trying to find the, the better religion and, and, and stuff like that I don't think you didn't want to be Christian you wanted answers Yes, yes. No, it's so like I, yeah. Right I wanted now. answers because I, I felt like something was missing. So I mean, um, I feel like let me just try and go out there and find, you know, try to learn other religion as I find peace. So anyway, guys, I don't know about you. I'm open to anything. Have you? Have, I, I have like learning. I like learning. Okay, she likes learning. To and she's find open something, to read. Find more information. Right. So we are here to learn guys. So uh don't judge us, we're just here to learn and here to educate ourselves. We are also here to educate you guys. Yep. And for you to educate us. Exactly. So today we're gonna react to uh a video right here and this one was suggested by a lot of people as usual and we wanna thank everybody who suggested this video right here. So uh without dwelling so much, we're gonna react to Mufti Menk talk about Illuminati Freemasons. So, without any further ado, guys, let's get it. In a narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how Surah Al-Kahf, the one who reads it on a Friday, would find his entire week enlightened up to the next Friday. So that is a narration. Another narration that is reported in a Darimi, Sunan Al-Darimi, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the one who reads Surah Al-Kahf and here reading does not just mean to recite it to read it, to understand it, to know what it's all about, to believe in it to have firm conviction and so on will be protected from the trials of the Dajjal what is the connection of Dajjal and Surah Al-Kahf Inshallah, this afternoon I will try to explain this connection because it is extremely interesting, very interesting. Firstly, when the Jal comes, we will be tested in four ways. He will try to take our religion away from us. So that is the test of religion. By claiming that he is the God and you, we need to accept him as the deity, that is the trial of the Jal. And the Jal refers to two things. One is what we know is the Dajjal. But then there is what is known as the fitna of the Dajjal. Anything, anything at any time that is connected to any one of the tests that we have been taught the Dajjal will bring forth is also part and parcel of his force. It might not be him in person, but it's part of his force and part of the tests. So anyone trying to take your religion away from you is a Dajjal. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, they will come to my ummah. Dajjaluna kathabuna qariban min thalathin. Kulluhum yaz'amu annahu nabiyun wa ana khatamun nabiyina la nabiyya ba'di. There will be so many Dajjals who come. 
A Dajjal is a liar. And the Dajjal, the plural of which is Dajjajila, used in the Arabic language, those who want to take your religion away from you. The Prophet ﷺ says, there will come people who will claim to be prophets. You should know that I am the final prophet. One narration says, 30 odd people will come. So, when the real Dajjal comes, the ultimate, the final, the sign of Qiyamah, that Dajjal comes, he will also want to take our religion from us. At that time, there will be famine. There will be drought. And he will say, I will give you. you all you got to do is say that I am the God. And, and you will not die of hunger. More like the economies of the globe, all depending on one major economy that tells you, if you accept us as the gods of the world, there will be no sanctions against you. And we will deal properly with you. And we will... Make sure that your economy boosts and goes up. And then they come and tell you, if you do anything that we don't like, we will impose sanctions on you and you will die of hunger. Doesn't it ring a bell? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us security. So these are the forces of the devil that want to impose their own ideas and thoughts and beliefs on everyone else. They want to take the religion away from people. So it's important for us to be protected in that sense. We all need to cling, cling to the deen. Allah says in the Quran, Hold fast upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be disunited. May Allah grant us unity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to hold fast on this rope. The rope here referring to the Qur'an and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the first test we made mention of that the Dajjal will be coming with is the test of religion. He will want us to disbelieve in Allah and believe in Him. And the hadith says, for anyone who has believed in Allah, as soon as they look at Him, they will see on His forehead the letters Ka, Fa and Ra, depicting that this one is actually a kafir. The second test the Jal will come about with, we touched on it just now, the test of wealth, where people will be poor, people will be suffering, there will be famine, there will be drought, but he will have control over what? He will have control over the water on the globe, and he will have control over irrigation. So you believe I'm a God, I make you rich. I will allow water to get to your land. When it gets to your land, you will be able to irrigate and then the produce will grow. So you believe in me as a God and you have produce. So that is a test of wealth. The third test he will come with is the test of knowledge. Test of knowledge in that what is right will be considered wrong and it will be believed. Secondly, those who are upright and knowledgeable will be considered ignorant and those who are ignorant will be considered the most knowledgeable. To the degree that all those with knowledge will be fought and eradicated until there will be nobody with knowledge left on the earth except those who are ignorant considered to be extremely knowledgeable and people will follow them that is also in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how knowledge will be taken away it will be taken away by the death of the scholars and when the scholars have gone people will start considering those who have no knowledge as knowledgeable and when that happens and these people start issuing rulings they will be misguided and they will misguide others and the helm, the height of it will be when the Dajjal comes, what is wrong will be believed as being correct. Take a look at the power of the media today. The media has the capacity and already has worked in that direction of making us hate our brothers in the Middle East solely because we believe they're crooks and we believe they're this. And yet we don't realize the source of the story is someone who's just playing with our minds. 
Firstly, when the Quran says, if a believer who is sinful comes to you with news of someone else, make sure you authenticate it firsthand before you believe it. Otherwise, you may believe something that will result in regret for yourself and you may accuse people of what they are not guilty of. What if someone who's not a Muslim comes to you? Someone who's an enemy. We're not talking of ordinary non-Muslims who sometimes might be more truthful than some Muslims. May Allah safeguard us and grant us truthfulness. But we're talking of people who are known as outright enemies of Islam. They are out there to get you. We believe their television stations. We believe their news. We believe their newspapers against our own brothers. So we are lost. And you find in the Muslim Ummah, if we are to ask any Muslim, who are the worst leaders in the world? They'll recite the names of 20 Muslim leaders and that's it. There we are. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, there are, at times we don't know what's going on and our information is from Dajjal. Our information is from forces similar to that of Dajjal. So there will be a test when the Dajjal comes, a test of what? Knowledge. He will take it away from us and he will make us believe that what we have is knowledge when it is not. We need to be worried. And the last test that is made mention of, the test of power, where people would love to be powerful and they want to have authority. So in order to gain a little bit of power, they begin to worship the devil because the Jal will instruct them to do that. Today you have the Satanists, you have the Freemasons. What do they do? Wallahi, they worship Iblis himself personally. And what does he do for them in return? He makes them feel the power. They feel it. And he can toss and turn people who are standing in front of them just because they have sacrificed for him. So he gives them a power. And they become powerful, solid people, strong. They can control your mind because there is the life of the unseen that they have sacrificed for. So they will murder people and spill blood in order to appease the devil so that they can become people who can control. Most of the singers, 99% of the pop stars that you have out there belong to this category. They all sacrifice doves backstage. They all engage in satanic behavior. They all belong to a cult. And all of them are promoting immorality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Their names are not fit to be mentioned in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we know who they are. And if you take a look at the way they clothe themselves, they are sucking in our children and they are sucking in some of us in an unbelievable way. And we still want to listen to all that music and play it in our cars, not realizing this is with the assistance of Iblis himself. And he is controlling our minds. And we appease ourselves by saying the lyrics are good. Na'udhu Billah. Allah safeguard us. Those lyrics for your information are becoming dirtier and filthier and more satanic as days pass. And we are still allowing it to go through our ears. So imagine what will go through the ears of our children. And they will say, Dad, you're living in the 60s. May Allah safeguard us. It's something to be worried about, to be concerned. We are in the month of Ramadan. We read Surah Al-Kahf, but sometimes we achieve nothing out of it because we don't even know what we are meant to be achieving out of it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> what do you think? This was a very, very good message. Mm. Yeah. That's why, this is why I always say we should always put religion aside and just focus on the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. At this point, let's not focus on religion, let's focus on the message. It doesn't matter who is passing this information, yeah. it's just too deep to even look at that right yeah. now. Go on. I mean, the, the, the message, the information is just like... Spot on. Spot on, really, really good, trust me. Because what, what what is just try at the beginning was trying to talk about the the John yeah 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 like the they're force. the force like the Antichrist I, I believe they're here on earth right about now trying he to said that too. Hmm? he said that yeah well. they're here actually trying to uh, give illusion to our fellow to like us us and stuff like that and to see maybe uh, lure us to go into like to deceive us into those uh, illusions 
and the moment you're there, I mean, the moment you accept them, then that's like you're gone. You get it. For example, nowadays, mo most of the people want to get rich really fast. You get it. So and what? People are going to take shortcuts. Yeah, and people want to take shortcuts. You. you, you shortcuts. Shortcuts. <laughs> like you know shortcuts. I mean, um, in life, you have to endure pain. You have to endure um, a lot of sacrifices for you to become worth it you have to work hard you have to work really hard but nowadays people want to just uh, to the top. yeah especially the people of young or the young people of nowadays they just want to go up really quick you get it so what happens even by money yeah so what happens is uh these people yeah the jal or whatever this the antichrist or these people who call themselves the freemasons uh, the, the, the freemasons or the you get it they come to you and they and they give you what you want what do you want you want a car you want money fine i'm gonna give it to you but what you need to do is you need to sacrifice so and so and so or you need to uh you know uh give us your soul you get it and all this type of thing so you find that like a lot of men and women out there do these things just to to become successful you get it and, and at the end of the at the end of the day it's not really worth it when it comes to your purpose where do you want to go after uh, your days on earth it doesn't make sense and now towards uh, towards the inf this information towards the end i like the the part where he say um that the the like when your father tells you <laughs> when your father tells you like what kind of songs are those and then you're like ah, that you're born you're born in the 80s and we actually do say such things yeah you're born in the 60s your songs are was boring and stuff like that what do you say about that? What's your what's your what's your take I on that? I personally pay attention to the lyrics because mm -hmm. that's what speaks to me. What happened between the because 60s? Some people, you know, some people just sing whatever mm -hmm. they sing. You, you hear this Nicki Minaj song and they just stay dancing, singing whatever. You're not even concerned about the lyrics because exactly. sometimes what you say it comes to life. Mm -hmm. They yeah, that. True. And there's a lot of songs I could give if, examples. If of. I may ask you, what what happened? What what? What what transpired between nineteen nineteen eighties to now? Things are changing. Era? Like what really happened in between? Why are we listening to garbage nowadays? Things are changing. Garbage mm. is the new. Um, it's the new way, yeah. New cool. It's wavy, like it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's what's selling. People are not taking their time to sit down and write proper music. True, true. What I can say is this: back in those days, like in the sixties, eighties. Okay, I wasn't born in the sixties, probably. Uh, 90s and 80s in between that what I can say is that during that period of time when let's say okay let's let's start from when this you were born? yeah even 80s was some good music even 90s the, when you know what changed the year 2000 <laughs> when they just see 2000 and above that's where things started changing completely that's when Lil Wayne started coming in and all these other rappers and whatnot but anyway this uh, okay what I'm trying to say is this yeah there's this type of mu music that used to be called soul, soul music. You get, it? you know why it used to be called soul music? I feel like they sang it from their soul. You get it? They gave it, they they gave it their all. Like if you listen to the lyrics, you'd be like, oh my god. You can't say that about every soul. Yeah, not 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 every like. The music was just rich with uh with lyrics, rich with um what do you call this with uh, beats and stuff like that and even the the what do you call this the level of vibration when it comes to the beats and everything was not lower than four uh four thirteen hertz or something like that if you do understand that anything lower than that it actually um it actually puts you at a lower vibration that's why today when you listen to all this type of music it's a low vibrational type of music you find yourself just having headaches maybe not even sleeping you get it okay you feel hype but at the end of the day you you get it drains uh, you it drains you and you get a really uh intense mind drain you get it and it's it's not that good i mean it, it's it's weighing us down so bad but people don't know that other than that you made a point about the um how other people make you see other worlds as mm -hmm. this what would you say about that like other people like news media yeah, yeah true true i mean what i can say is this don't ever believe or don't ever uh look at the media 
and think that they are telling you the truth. What I can say is media Especially came from the word. So. Yeah. Because I swear, if, oh, is, is that wrong to say? Yeah, it's Because everyone has this image about Muslims, but then when you meet them or talk to them, look at the other, the other week, was it two weeks ago? I met someone and they're so kind and welcome. They call you sister, they call you brother. They, call, they just make you feel like you're yeah, the same people. Other than that, look at our YouTube. People are quite welcome. They're really good and people, kind. man. Really kind. And but really, then when you really look at when you sit down and look at the watch news. what's being oh shown on TV, this place and bomb this place. And that's all the media. The media wants to portray the Middle East as the as the word as the terrorists, as the Al Shabaab, as the Al Qaeda, as, as the ISIS and whatnot. Um, media comes from the Greek um, the Greek goddess or whatever. Uh, I think I think um, she's called Medusa or something like that. And I don't know, I'm not hundred percent sure but it's it's uh, like it's a way of controlling people media you get it and television is like telling uh, lies visually you get it i mean everything you see on television is a lie most of the things you see they are staged staged and staged that's how i'm, I'm seeing television to be what do you think you think it's staged most of the things some of the things yeah some of the things are staged anyway this this was a good uh this is a really good statement right here i mean so so profound and i like the the part whereby he was talking about these uh, these uh, pop artists that they are, you know, that the ones who are actually um, actually doing or like they are they're into satanism and they are incorporating the music industry. You know, something really funny, really. Wait, but other than that, we should also look at the fact that they're influencing us. Exactly. That's what I was going to. You know, something funny is that these people are so, like, they're so, like, they have numbers, like, they're so famous, and then we tend to like look at them as a role model. You get it? Like a lot of young kids are like, I want to be like Beyonce, I want to be like Jay Z, I want to be like, I don't know. I mean, all these type of people, man. You don't know what these people go through. You can't just say I want to be like whatever person. No, be 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 like you. Just try to be somebody. But anyway, this was a nice. So, for conclusion, what do you think? What can you say? It's, it's a deep message, very, very deep. Yep. It's like he hit all the points you could ever think of. Mm. He, he told, he spoke about everything affecting us. I mean, he didn't give that much details. I mean, it's a short yeah. um, video, but everything spot on. Yeah, she said everything was spot on, and I'm gonna leave it at that note. If you feel like you've reacted to this video in a better way, just give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down our comment section tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction. And what you feel about this video right here of Mufti Meng. Meng. Talk about Illuminati Freemason. Just let us know in the comment section. If you have more information, just let us know in the comment section below. You might know more than us. Just tell us. Just let's um, educate each other. Let's learn from each other. Uh, give us anything you feel like is going to benefit the two of us. And the most important thing is don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The more you keep on subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give us a better, better content. And last but not the least, we're going to see you in the next video. And peace out.